Hey folks, for this screencast, I'm going to show you how to do some uh, Euler integration. And I'm going to come up with like kind of just like a simple, imagine you're uh, a two-dimensional object in a vector field. And so I'm going to define this like two-dimensional vector field where Vx is, uh, I'm going to do np or 10 times np dot sine of x plus 10, negative, uh, yeah. It should be fine. I'm trying to think. I might, I might get leave the 10 off, and then vy is 10 times np dot cosine of x of y, and so my initial conditions are going to be zero zero. So I think if I plug into that velocity field, the x velocity will be zero, but the y velocity won't. Oh, interesting. Um, I might do x squared plus y squared like this. That way, initially, my x velocity will be zero, but my y velocity won't. So then I will start to move in the positive y direction, but then that will create some velocity in the x direction, and maybe it'll do some loops or something. Who knows? Um, so these, this is my uh, sort of vector field, right, that defines my x and y velocity. And then this is going to be my, my initial condition. And then here is going to be my numerical integration. Um, so I'm going to make a time step of 0.1, and I'm going to say for counter in range uh, 0 to 100. So I'm going to only iterate 100 times, um, and I'm going to say my Euler integration, what you do is you have your uh, function defined at i, or I'll say x defined at i plus 1. Sorry, the next iteration is x defined at the current iteration plus velocity defined at the current iteration times the time step. So instead of doing i plus 1 and i, I'm just going to do x equals x. And I'm going to add the velocity in the x direction um, times my time step. Now in order to get the velocity in the x direction, I need to come back up to my function and return vx and vy. And then back down here in the for loop, I need to uh, call that function and give it my current x and y coordinates. So this line of code right here is going to call this function. And this is going to compute the velocity and return it. And then I'm going to use it here to compute my position. And then I'm going to do the same thing for uh, y. Now, if I just run this, um, I'm going to save this as Euler integration.py. If I run this, it's going to say np is not defined. And that's because I need to put my modules in here. So import numpy as np. I already know I'm going to plot. So matplotlib.py plot as plt. Now I'm going to run that, and it runs, no errors. I want to be able to plot. If I type in x, it's just one number, and y is another number. So what I need to do is I need to make an empty array, right? So this makes an empty array with nothing in it. Y vector is an other empty array. So imagine like a box with nothing in it. And then every time I run through the loop, and I'm going to do it up top, I'm going to append, I'm going to put a variable into the box and so I need to make sure that x is the variable that I want to put in the box, and the x vector is the name of the box. And I'm going to do the same thing for y vector dot append y. Now I'm only going to do uh, four iterations just so you can see what happens. If I type in x, I just get one number. But if I type in x vector, <coughs> I get four numbers. Cool? And this is kind of neat too because like I was saying, x doesn't move until I get like a velocity in the x direction. And so now what I can do is I can plot x vector and y vector in blue stars, right? And I can plt.show, and now I can kind of see what the object is um, doing. So yeah, so it is doing like a pretty cool circle, which is neat. Um, let's iterate for more times, like say 100 times. And it's doing something crazy over here. Let's make my time step smaller. So I'm going to decrease my time step by a factor of 10 and then increase the number of iterations by a factor of 10. And so, oh man, that is really cool. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. So um, let's, in, let's decrease my time step by another factor of 10 and increase my number of iterations just to make sure that I've converged to the solution. And it looks like I've completely converged to the solution there. And so there is my numerical integration. Um, if I increase my time step to like 1.0, I'm going to get like wildly inaccurate. And so that is just honestly 
really still really cool um, but it's uh, it's clearly not accurate like you can kind of see there's a lot of discontinuous jumps and things like that but it's almost like fractal imagery in, in, in a way but if I uh, drop my time step down you'll see that the simulation will get more and more accurate so there's the one we saw the other day the other day 30 seconds ago and then here is where I think it finally converges to the uh, the true solution that might even be a little bit inaccurate. Let's try uh, 0.001 and let's try that and see what happens. There you go. It's also possible it's converging to like a perfect circle. So let's keep the time step the same and increase the number of iterations. Now my computer's about to like blow up probably. Um, let's see if that actually plots. That's a lot of different variables. If it doesn't come up in the next five seconds, I'm gonna kill it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I paused it for you so you didn't have to wait. Uh, yeah, so it looks like it's like slowly spiraling out and converging to this like big circle. Actually, it's interesting. It's converging to a 10 by 10 circle, which is funny because that's exactly what this is. It's kind of neat. Uh, anyway, so there's some numerical integration for you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, comment below, right? Below, uh, well, hang on. My video is not where, I guess, this, yeah, this way. Comment below over here. And I uh, hope to see you in the next video.